recording. And we are live. Welcome to the Rhino Podcast, episode 40. And the mass polydrama of Charlie Baker not seeking re-election. Good morning, Caitlin. How are you? Good morning, Jeff. How's it going? Oh, good. I gotta... you got your Lincoln. You got your Lincoln mug. Lincoln mug. Because this is a Republican podcast. Yes. I Well, unfortunately, I went with Starbucks iced coffee this morning. Ice coffee? What the... F it's a hot coffee day. It's Sunday morning, and it's a hot coffee day. I... Well, so the problem is, is that I'm a cold-hearted Republican bitch. You're a I mean drink... girl. You're a <laughs> mean girl, Caitlin. How dare you, mean girl? You're a Which mean. So... You're a mean girl on Twitter. Which is so funny because I'm like sure. the nicest person in real life. <laughs> you are. You just don't put up with bullshit from idiots. Right. And who? That's... And the person who was saying that's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I have a low tolerance for bullshit, Jeff. You yeah. all know this. Like, I just, I, I don't live my life pretending things that are I, not yeah. real are real and that the current issues that are happening are not actual problems. And right. we are going to get into that oh, because there are a lot of people <laughs> pretending that issues are not real and yeah. they are very real issues. There, there's <laughs> a lot to cover, a lot to cover. But first... Uh, we are going to have a little history lesson for all the journos out there and the Republican uh, activists, um, <laughs> both the moderates and the, the nutbags. Um, but we are the normals, and we'll give it to you straight. Okay. Charlie Baker, one of the most popular politicians in the country, did a phenomenal job, great job as governor. Um, ran for governor in the year 2010, and he lost. And it was a close campaign. Deval Patrick won with 48% of the vote. He did not have a mandate. <clears throat> the narrative that came out of that at the time that too many people believed, especially moderates uh, in the mass GOP, inside the bubble, the consultant class, um, and a lot of other people, was that Charlie ran a campaign that was too angry. Uh, and that's why he didn't get elected. No. The real reason why Charlie Baker didn't get elected in 2010 was Tim Cahill. That's his name. Tim Cahill was the former state treasurer, a Democrat who left the Democratic Party to run as an independent. And pulled enough, enough votes away from Charlie Baker, um, enabling... Deval Patrick to win in one of the week in a wave year and remember 2010 it was a wave year for Republicans took back the house um, from you know the disastrous uh, I guess rebound after Obamacare was put into place prior to that you had Scott Brown as well I believe yeah yeah, yeah. so if you break down Tim Cahill's numbers and anybody's welcome to do it the the, the numbers are out there a 60-40 split of Tim Cahill's numbers in favor of Baker. Because remember, you voted for Tim Cahill. You didn't want Deval Patrick, okay? 60-40 split of his numbers. Baker wins. Baker wins in 2010. That's what happened, okay? So it wasn't because Charlie Baker ran too angry of a campaign. Now, you fast forward to 2014. Well, actually, let me rewind a little bit. In 2010, it was a wave year for Republicans, and what happened actually in Massachusetts is the Massachusetts le legislature picked up a bunch of seats, both in the Senate and the House. And that in, emboldened and enabled people who, you know, from Central Mass, they rode that wave and had a lot of success. Uh, I'm thinking about former National Committee woman Chanel Prunier, um, <laughs> our friend who thinks you're a mean girl. You know, this was this wave, right? Right. It, it it swept a lot of ours into office, and it overinflated, I'd say, the political acumen of the people that were surrounding that wave. Meaning, they didn't do shit, but they thought they did because a bunch of people who they agreed with and got on the ballot won one election. 
one of those people was Jeff Deal. Now, that was 2010. Since 2010, they haven't done anything, that faction of it. But they still think, they're still holding on 11 years later to the myth that they're good at politics. And they weren't that good at politics to begin with. They just rode an anti-Obama wave into office. Now, 2014, Scott Brown had lost, Mitt Romney had lost, uh, both Massachusetts Republicans. Uh, we had lost some seats in the House, in the House of Representatives, and maybe a Senate seat or two. Now, maybe just one. 2014, Charlie Baker ran as good a campaign as he could have, and Martha Coakley was the going to be the anointed one, her second shot after losing to Scott Brown. That was I remember this clearly. This is actually yeah. after I moved to Massachusetts. I moved back. Right. I moved here um, in 2012. I was I went to Mitt Romney's um, election night party. The Democratic Party nominating Martha Coakley was a mistake, and if they nominated Steve Grossman, Charlie Baker probably would have lost. And Charlie Baker won against the very weak Martha Coakley, who just people didn't like. wasn't a good candidate. The what am I going to do, shake hands with people outside Fenway Park in the cold? That's still like stuck with a lot of people. They just didn't like her. And Charlie Baker won about by what, 30 or 40,000 votes. There was also a third candidate in that race, and his name is Evan Falchuk, a smug little pissant progressive who took enough votes away from Martha Coakley to swing that election. By the skin of his teeth, Charlie Baker gets into office. From that point on, he was all business and didn't fall for any of the bait that the press wanted him to take. And he ran a very smart, shrewd, competent administration. And because he did that, all he had to do was talk about what he's done, not take the bait for what the journals, the, 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 you know, the, um, the cause of the day or whatever it was. Um, and he cruised to like elect reelection in 2018 against a very weak Jay Gonzalez. Okay. But we can't forget how hard 2010 and 2014 were. And Wednesday, when the governor said he wasn't seeking reelection, everybody was peeing their pants about, oh, my God, we have no chance. Well, look, yes, the chances went down of a governor, Republican governor getting reelected dramatically. But that doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, we're going to get into more of that in a second. But that history lesson is important because people don't realize how bad it was previously. People have, look at look at that those elections with rose-colored glasses because Charlie Baker's so popular now. And they shouldn't. They have to have a sober lens of what actually happened in the campaigns that took place. Because the Democrats, in a wide open field, can nominate somebody that sucks. And we'll get into their their uh, candidates in a minute. But did I miss anything throughout those, through that history lesson, Caitlin? No. I mean, I'm so I'm so sorry, Jeff, that you're not focusing on um, the cost of parking in Charlie Baker's 2018. <laughs> campaign but everything seemed very uh precise and correct yeah so on wednesday when charlie baker said he wasn't he and karen polito were not seeking re-election um the dipshit jim lyons <clears throat> who me saying this like i want to help out candidates who are not jeff deal right get elected um they're not going to want to bring me on to help them because I've called Jim Lyons a fucking moron um, and I'm doing it now because he is. Uh, and it would- it Almost might, every episode. <laughs> yeah, it's like a recurring theme. It doesn't make it any less true. Um, so, so you know, there's, there's ideas I could have that would benefit them greatly, but they'd have, you know, they'd have me and I'm probably, you know, he, there, there is, he's, he can twist things to hurt them because of me. And I wouldn't want to do that because I, I want them to actually succeed and do well. Um, but Jim Lyons comes out with a statement basically saying that Jeff Deal <laughs> scared Charlie Baker off, which is the dumbest goddamn thing I've ever heard. Look, it would have been a, a fight 
for sure. And it would have been a fight that Charlie Baker would win and Charlie Baker would have cruised to re-election in the general. Um, it's not a real thing, the, the idea that Charlie Baker was scared of Jeff Deal. Okay? Nonsense. Eight years as governor, the last two have been exhausting and brutal with COVID. And I don't, I don't blame him at all for like, no, I'm just done. You know, his kids are grown up. He'll probably be a grandfather in a few years. Relax. You know, you got another year of your administration. Take it easy. Take a break. Enjoy life. You know, you did eight years of this. There, there might be another second chapter or third chapter down the road. Who knows? But right now, you know, he doesn't have to. And the idea that, that Jim Lyons, a trashy, classless statement that Je that he was scared of Jeff, Jeff fucking deal. Give me a break. Um, but just more, I mean, just the dipshittery around Lyons and, and his chairmanship of the mass GOP is, I mean, it's pathetic and we're going to keep riding him, keep embarrassing him, keep ostracizing him. He's, he's a joke. And uh, he's not, he's not exactly helping himself, Jeff. Right. We, we kind of, now we're going to get into know, the fun stuff. Right. So Charlie Baker announced um, this week um, before then other drama happened on the state committee that we, we need to get into. Um, but Lyons has some very politically isolating behavior right now that does not benefit him. And we, everyone needs to be very real about that behavior, not being beneficial to what his current position is. Right. Okay. Um, and pretending otherwise is de delusional. But like, that's that's crazy. Like I, what do you do? You want to go ahead and get into what, what well, happened? Okay. So state. first off, the, the at the state committee meeting, the normal members of the state committee uh, did you know pulled a no show, and they pulled a coordinated no show so that um, Jim could not declare a quorum. Was it 40 members needs you need a quorum, right? Something like that. I thought it was over half, Jeff. I don't know the well, actual that would number. Be, that would be 41 if it was over yeah. half. So you need, you need a quorum to hold a meeting. <laughs> and and uh, good for the people that, that didn't show up um, because he wouldn't seat a parliamentarian. That was the – did the National Committee – um, so Ron, Ron Kaufman, the um, RNC chair for the Mass GOP, uh, reached out to the RN, our RNC because of internal issues that they have during their meeting and Jim running them in a um, poor way. Um, they asked for a parliamentarian to be at all meetings and Jim um, decided to go back on that deal. Um, and so they decided to not have a quorum at the meeting to politically isolate him. And they were very straightforward about uh, disagreeing with the way that he, he runs his meetings. Right. They were very loud about it, which is good. Yeah. And so he decides to, you know, not have a meeting and only having a meeting of the executive committee, which he can't do because of rules. Well, he's just breaking rules left and right, breaking rules left and right. And his sycophants acting like this is some sort of big win for him. It's just another embarrassing loss. So that took place before Wednesday before the governor announced, because people are just in open revolt against this idiot. Um, I, I, and the, the, the sad part about it is there's, the, the, the news doesn't get any better because Jim's whole master plan with other puppet masters behind him was to be annoying to Charlie Baker via Jeff deal. Charlie Baker's like, I'm, I'm out. I'm tired of this. I just, not even, not tired of this, the drama, just tired of, you know, needs a break. Full deserves one. Moving on. Now you have this situation where they're pot committed. Jeff Deal's going to run for governor. There are other people jumping into the race um, that are as conservative or supported Trump or worked for Trump or or whatever. Um, and we have no money as a party. We have no people working for the party we have no infrastructure so what they've set the up part of that is very key jeff yeah i mean so we lost a um a, a house seat um on tuesday bob snow lost um to is it uh belcito um and jamie, jamie belcito yep jamie belcito um 
I think it's like Ipswich, Topsfield, uh, Hamilton, Wenham, and I think there might, I think it's Essex too. Um, that seat we've held since Lincoln was president of the United States. We lost it. Yeah. And sure. part, of, part of the problem was is that mass GOP has no infrastructure, no money. Right. Um, and, and so the, the people who, you know, they're running the campaign, they have no nothing to right. really... So, they have no infrastructure as well. And, and this is really important because no one's going to give to the mass GOP if they know, and this is true, Jim Lyons is supporting Jeff Deal when two people who – or more people that are legitimate contenders, uh, Sean O'Connell, mayor of Taunton, or Andrew Lelling, a former U.S. attorney, are considering runs. Because what happens is you – like during – for fundraising – your maximum donation per for an individual under Massachusetts law is a thousand bucks a year, I believe. So you can only you know raise that from your donors, like one thousand you know per per couples, two thousand or whatever it is. You can max that out for till December thirty first. Then you start anew in the in the new year. Um, but the way that the Democratic Party is they're hauling in all this money because they can max out, I think, 16000 to the party a donor can. But no donor is going to do that if they think that Jim Lyons is backing Jeff Deal, which he is, for the governor's nomination. Or it's so they're going to hold that. it. So that what that so what's that? It's, I do have to say it's not even that. Right, Jeff? I mean. The, the issue with the state party right now is that they have no infrastructure. They're not doing any type of PR. It's even that they don't even look like they're um, they can do this. Like it's 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 really that bad. Like well, and, and they can't <laughs> and they can't and they won't be able to raise the money to build that infrastructure as a normal party should. So, yeah. uh, you know, th that then creates a situation where. Maybe in September of 2022, when the primary is over and we have a nominee, uh, where you have to, you don't have enough time to raise enough money, and you also don't have enough time to spend that money um, because you know take to and to hire enough people and to roll out a legitimate political party campaign. So, for Sean for Sean O'Connell or um, Andrew Lelling, who, whoever might get that nomination, because I don't think it's going to be Jeff Deal after this clusterfuck um and i'm impressed with lelling so if i am voting in a primary i'm voting for him i haven't i'm he's impressive on paper um yeah but i haven't heard I, him speak we'll, we'll, I, hear, yeah. we'll hear him going forward but right now yeah. i consider myself um he's got an impressive resume and right now that would be the person that i would back in a primary there you i'll go. be straight okay I mean that's that that I, mean, I, I haven't made a decision. I I I'm probably leaning that way. But he if he's if got I, executive experience, like that's already a good key thing that is necessary to be governor of Massachusetts. It's really a logical decision for me. Like you have to have certain points on your resume that I would agree with voting for you. If you don't have those, and that's really you know, I mean I'm not a Democrat. A lot of those people don't have that type of experience at all because they think that working government is going to give you that type of experience and it no, doesn't. No. But um, but that type of experience is something that me as a, pri a Republican primary voter in the state of Massachusetts, I'm going to look at that and say, yeah, I'm probably going to vote for that as of right now. Um, I'll look at it. I'm, I'm open minded on on the two of them. If he speaks and he puts me to sleep and I have a think, you know, and it's like it's boring and maybe another candidate I think is better suited to, uh, you know, get people to vote for them. Um, and if she, I don't know if it, I also as well, I would I would consider that as well. That That's the thing. Like they have both have executive experience. Shauna, you know, is mayor of Taunton. Like yeah. that is good experience. That would be poignant to running for governor. Yeah deal does not have that experience so it, it's right now it's yeah zero it's not great it's not great jeff yeah um uh, so, so that's what i'm thinking so i mean but but putting that aside they're going to be incredibly handicapped who whoever wins that nomination they're going to be incredibly handicapped and there's nothing here's here's what i here's here's the tough part unless jim goes away and you elect a competent chair if he resigns and you elect a competent chair which not going to happen. He's going to cling to the bitter end till he gets voted out in January of 2023. He's going to cling. And Jim, I hope you do, because I just get to beat you up more because you're an idiot. It's I think we're be... at the 
least five now you calling him an idiot but it's not yeah i mean it, we have to keep driving the point home if you're driving the state party into the ground what and you keep politically isolating yourself he, what what are you doing like he, you're here's not, here's you're the not, here's the only leverage the that you can have here's the only leverage if you're a republic if you're a normal republican out there in and watching this here's the probably the only way it can s theoretically happen you live in a state senate district and you're a man or a woman who has a state committee man or woman that supports Jim Lyons. You then contact that state committee man or woman, ask them if they support Jim. If they say yes, you say, okay, I will be challenging you in 2024 and I will work my ass off to beat you and campaign against you if you don't vote to remove him because they need 54 votes. Theoretically, and this is just theoretically, that's what needs to happen. You need to flip the. You need to flip enough people's brains to go. All right, I'll vote to remove him, or I'll be gone in two years. Now that probably won't happen, but it's literally the only way. Or if Jim decides to resign, which he won't. So we're in a bit of a pickle, and I feel bad for. Well, I think Sean O'Connell and Andrew Lelling are both qualified to be governor. Um, it would make much better candidates than Jeff Deal would make much better governors than more Healy or Marty Walsh or Sonia Chang Diaz or whomever. But it's going to be a tough road. Dude. Just the, the limitations and the lack of infrastructure that exists right mm -hmm. now are going to uh, hamstring and there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it's look real. good. So the Democrats have a huge advantage here, not uh, uh, on top of their normal electoral advantage. So I'm not optimistic about this only because not because of the candidate candidates in particular, but because of the absolute disaster the state party is in, which you need to make it function normally. Right. And the thing is, Jeff, like we need to be very real and realistic about what's going on in the state party. I feel like a lot of people want to paint over a lot of like reasonable criticism that like you know basic republican voters were allowed to have um about the state party like yeah. it is not a reasonable excuse to say sh you, you need to shut up about these um because you haven't worked for the mass gop i'm a voter i'm allowed to be critical and i'm about to allowed to give reasonable criticism i give to republican candidates across this country and i give to local candidates when they prove to me that they can win and have a good platform. So yeah, I'm not going to shut up. You're not going to fillet me. I'm going to keep being loud about it yeah. because this is, this is, you know, these are our values. The, this is what we stand for. And that's what's at stake here, Jeff. But that's important. It's mm -hmm. worth it. Yeah. No, okay. And so you better believe like, I'm going to be helping my state committee person organize an RTC for my town, and we are going to be popular, and we are going to try to, you know, do make change. Well, like, well, th th this makes me livid, Jeff. This is, this is the other thing here. So I can't work through my state committee people because they're in the group that supports Jim. So because of that, what, I, what I'm thinking about doing, and would take a lot of effort with – your help, we'd have to do this together, is create kind of a groundswell to pack the town committees and the city committees with normal people to overwhelm at convention um, any possible, you know, shenanigans that, that Lions would pull to help out Je uh, Jeff Deal. Um, it's possible. I mean, we just need the numbers. And I don't think, I, here's the thing I, about this. They know, like, they, they know in their heart of hearts that they're just, that Jim sucks. Right. And it's all spin. It's all deflection. It's like, well, why don't you go knock on doors? Fuck you. Knock on doors. I've knocked on a ton of doors to help get people elected. Money. You're, yeah. There's no money. There's no money that exists in the party. What we're pointing out right. is, is just the truth. And it's like your deflection to go donate to a candidate. Fuck you. Well, my, <laughs> like, my uh, you I'm not, automatically to national candidates. It should be going to Massachusetts GOP, but they have proven to me that they cannot handle the money that I would even donate. Jeff. Hmm. Like, I mean, good God, no. they can't even do a PR campaigns and talk about our values in consistent ways. They send out emails that are like novel pages long 
of nonsense. And that's not the way that you're going to grow the party. Like I am not seeing active steps to grow the state party. There hasn't that's been. That's the problem. The, and, the, and the bullshit that came out when Jim first got elected that there's going to be an urban outreach program two years later, nothing. That never, that was just nonsense. Uh, you know, voter registration drives, no, nothing. Like, nothing. Incompetence. Incompetence. Idiocy. That's what you get. Lack of spine in anything other. He got his photo op with Trump at Mar-a-Lago. That's what he cares about. Now he goes well, around and pretending like spread the state party. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. I and, can tr- we have talked about this so many times, Jeff, about Donald Trump and the fact that Donald Trump is going to be irrelevant, uh, probably mostly irrelevant uh, outside of a lot of, you know, maybe rural areas going in after 2022, going into 2024. He has no social media presence. And the media is already propping up Ron DeSantis as the the opponent here by lying about him. They lied about him yesterday. And they're essentially the same playbook as what how Donald Trump came into the 2016 yeah. candidacy where they made him the, you know, the opponent. And so it's, it's the Streisand effect. You, and they don't know what they're right, doing. Why yeah. are you trying to cling to something that's not electorally popular here and start yeah. instead of trying to reach out to people like us and asking us to, you know, help out? Like, that's the thing. It's just here, here's why. Here's why. And it's as simple as this. Us versus them. They're that they, we they know that they're terrible, but they don't care. Because we're the ones criticizing them, so we're so, so the, <laughs> they're 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 fighting the elites, Jeff. Yeah, right. They're, they're fighting, fighting the elites. The they're in charge of the party. They're on a Republican committee, the state the state committee, uh, and their chairman is is in power. Their chairman is in power, and and oh, the elites. Like, hate to break it to you, shitheads. You're the elites. <laughs> You're the elites, you you're are. the establishment, and you're fucking up because you can't do anything right. Like, you're, you're, you're in charge. Bad. You're in charge. You're and you're the- mad that people are being critical of that. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the thing. That's you're it. mad at reasonable crit- criticism. Like, you're failing. And people who, like us, are allowed to be mad. I'm yeah. so sorry. It, you know, you either change the behavior or you're going to politically isolate yourself even more. Yep. No, it's just, it, it's laughable. Um and you got to keep after these people. This is the thing. Here's the, here's the truth about it. The people that are on that side, are, they're, they, they stink. They don't have a lot going on. A lot of, a lot of divorces. A lot of, you know, never been married. No kids. You know. Maybe and we're the normal. And yeah. we're the normal. Like, like, the a, lo- a lot of it. Is just you look at the cross section there. There's a lot of that, right? So they don't have a lot and going on. We're, we're the normals. Like, we're mm-hmm. the ones that came around and voted for Trump in 2020 because we we wanted those values to win. Mm-hmm. We voted down ballot Republicans mm-hmm. in the state, regardless of the bullshit that's going on with the state committee and the party. Like, we're we're the ones who will do that. And, and here's the thing. But being, we're each a breaking the, point. The, but I, I want to stress this to the folks watching who, who might be inclined to – this is important – who might be inclined to show up to a town committee meeting or the convention and, this, and, and, and be a delegate. They are kind of they're losers, right? But they're and they're awkward to be around. They're kind of crazy. A few of them are like really in your face about, well, wasn't the uh, twenty twenty election completely stolen? And Lynn Wood said this, and QAnon said that, and all this stuff. And they're they're a little kooky. They're kooky, and they're uncomfortable to be around, for real. But you have to like have presence of mind to still show up, find somebody else normal to make friends with, go as a pair, and overwhelm them. Essentially, and we can organize this. We can help organize it, but that's what has to happen. Like the normals have to take over because those people they're they're aggressive and annoying and bullying, and and they they they'll get in your face. But you have to be able to just stand your ground and know what you do is right. And it's it's awkward. Like that's how they kind of win. Is like when everybody just cedes the ground to them. You got it. We got to perpetually. They're like they're they're. It's just like you know hygiene and exercising it's something we're gonna have to deal with forever you know you just gotta do it is get, is get them out confront them you know not let them bully you around and and show up and say no you're an idiot you're crazy it's time we move on 
Let's get rid of Jim. And it's going to be a long process. But I, I, I'm, it, you know, I'm not optimistic for 2022. But beyond that, I, I kind of am because we can actually affect change uh, for that. Um, so th that's what you can do as a normal Republican out there. Uh, and you have to be a registered Republican, not an independent. You have to get in the fight. And a lot more people are willing to get in the fight now. I'm, I'm Enroll, seeing that. Please. Yeah. There, there's people like Jeff and I in the state party that are involved um, on the more local level um, that are normal, that are yeah. the a part of the normals. That is our 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 phrase. Um, and so, yeah, we will be there, you know, and we 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 support you all. Um, we want you to be involved, um, and we want you to be loud, um, and we want you to voice your opinion. Yep. Uh, and yeah. So, it, it, so moving on, we could get lucky too, and let's talk about how lucky we could get. All right, okay. and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the Democratic candidates that have been floated out there so far. I'll say this right now, declaratively. For I was out with a friend last night, and he's like, he's just like, as like I don't want to hear anything else. Who gets elected governor in 2022? Like right now, and I'm like, I sunk in my chair and I said, Marty Walsh. OK, now I, I actually do. I do think that he will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do think that he would be the runner if he entered the race. Right. Let's look at this. We could get lucky, though. You never know. It's a split field. Right. So all the people that that have joined so far are, are nobodies like Ben Downing. Drop out. Just drop out right now. <laughs> Don't, nobody knows who you are. Nobody cares. Um, you know, you're not going to raise enough money. You're not going to have the profile. Uh, you know, you could go hard, hard left if that's what you want to do, but it won't work because um, there's enough people on the hard, hard left that aren't going to go for you. Uh, there's a professor at Harvard, BC. I, for I forget her name. Um, that's going nowhere. Uh, Sonia Chang Diaz. Now, there's somebody who will who will activate the progressive base. Yeah, and it'll be interesting when more Healy gets in what that does, how that split occurs. Uh, and then Marty Walsh, who, you know, has the executive experience. And, and you look at that. You should look at Sonia Chang Diaz and you look at Moore Healy. And quite frankly, they'll sort of split the progressive vote enough so that neither of them can, you know, overwhelm um, Marty Walsh as as uh, what uh, what do you call it? Um, Marky did to Joe Kennedy. I've heard Joe Kennedy floated as a name. I'm like, that's not happening. Um, I, especially I after. He already, his, I think that? he already said he's not. Yeah, he said it. No, I thought that yeah. he's trying to do like political action committee kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but he he he's after Marky beat him bad in that primary. It ain't happening. So the best thing in the world for Marty Walsh is Sonia Chang Diaz and Maura Healy running in that race as well, because he will take that you know center left dem old school politician yeah. lane it's and, the and, old and, school type yeah, thing but tons I think, of money yeah i think marty walsh will be i think that old school dem um not super outwardly progressive um i think yeah. that's kind of a winning path for them in this state i i fear marty walsh more than i fear i mean yeah. I hate saying it like this, but Massachusetts Hillary Clinton. So I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she comes off very authentic. Uh, so um, every yeah. single time I hear her speak, I think Sonia Shang Diaz could have some momentum just based on progressive, you know, yeah. activism. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It could. Um, but you know, if, if they nominate Sonia Chang Diaz, if you hear the phrase, if you hear the phrase from these candidates, bold progressive vision, Oh, Run the other way, please. Well, run, run the other way. No, but if you're if you're a Democrat, oh yeah, definitely vote for that because because <laughs> it, it increases it increases our chances of beating you uh, in well, November. Well, I, I personally run away as fast as possible when someone says yeah. bold progressive uh, vision. Yeah. Bold pro bold progressive vision is is the is the is the phrase I want to hear coming out of of. Uh, all the candidates, right? Because that that only helps, you know, a nominee yeah, of Sean O'Connell or Andrew Lelling. It's it's just true. It's gonna it's gonna yeah. be um, more more beneficial. Marty Walsh just saying, you know, kind of running a you know a whatever campaign against uh, our nominee. 
you know, I, I, I don't see a path for them, not with the infrastructure being of the party infrastructure being the way it is. It's just a disaster. So uh, it's not looking good. Um, but you never know what can happen in on their side of the. Uh, I, so, yeah. And that's the thing that we do need to say, like organically, there's going to be a red wave, right? Like yeah. Biden is not doing a great job at president. Um, inflation is happening. Gas prices are, you know, the Democrats were bragging about two cents dropping, but I mean, they're, they're volatile, right? Like yeah. it's, it's, it's a real thing. People are looking at their pocketbooks and they're seeing supply, supply issues really affect them when you can't get yeah. a couch for free. like that is right. because of supply issues in our ports. And so, the fact that our state party cannot ride an organic red mm. wave bringing in See, they, money is yeah. a problem. See, um, there's gonna but be, anything can happen. Yeah, there's so. going to be state parties all across the country that are going to ride this red, red wave. And this is important. This is the other thing about like coattails, right? We need somebody that yeah. can have coattails. Because it's very possible you could just get on the ballot for state rep or state senate. And the threshold isn't that high. You only need like... Th- 150 signatures or 300 signatures to get on the ballot as a state senator and ride that wave, right? Of, right. of, and just run a decent campaign. And you, who the hell knows? You might pick up, you know, might, might pick up a few. Like this, that's what happens in wave years is people go, no. And they write, they write in the opposite party. And in purple states, it definitely can swing the balance, right? And we nationally, you, you hear about this that we'll pick up X amount of seats. It, you know, it's not going to be as big a swing as 2010 because we don't, we already have a, a lot of seats. We have what, 206 or something like that. So it's, it just, the ones available to win aren't, aren't there. So there won't be as many, um, flips, but it'll still be a wave. And yeah. because we, we have enough already. Um, one thing I'm, I, I want to point out there is, you know, with Jim under possible indictment, for campaign fraud uh because of and he's bringing down someone who is good yeah see sucks. see this is this is the top this is this is this is the killer about it this is the fucking killer about it ryan fatman who i like good yeah. state good legislator um good guy good family man um, yeah he this would have been this is the this is the i this is the fucking irony of him and rick and Jeff fucking around thinking they're going to screw Charlie over. Now, because they put Jim Lyons in place and back Jim Lyons and won't tell him to get, get the fuck out, they fucked their fair haired boy. Ryan Fatman would have been cute. This would have been like his moment, right? If, if Charlie Baker was like, done. Jim's not under, you know, suspicion of indictment because of what he did to Ryan Fatman's campaign. Ryan Fatman would have been in a prime position. Jeff Deal would drop out. They'd, they'd force Jeff to drop out because Rick would just make a call. That's it. You're done. Ryan would have been the guy. And Ryan's a good campaigner. He's good on the stump. Uh, can raise a ton of cash. Now he's under suspicion of campaign uh, malfeasance, you know, campaign funding fraud. Right. Just It's Jim Lyons' fault. Literally, yeah. literally. Um, Be careful what you do out there, folks, in life, because this kind of, you know, chicanery, it comes back to you. And now it's coming back to them. You know, Ryan yeah. Fatman would have been a phenomenal candidate for governor. Yeah. Ran a great campaign. All the yes. experience. And now nothing. I mean, he, I yeah. suppose he could, you know, decide to run. It's very. I don't think, it, it, I don't think so, Jeff. Yeah, I, I don't know how you, Why? you know. I, while you're under investigation right now. Yeah. Like what? So, so there you go, guys. There you go, 30 state committee members who just will support Jim to the bitter end. This is what happens. This is what happens. Um, yeah. And you're going to have to, you know, deal with the after effects. You know, the funny thing is, I swear to God, Caitlin, I, after he, after Baker said he wasn't going for re-election, I was like, oh, fuck. And it depends what happens. We'll see. But, somebody who wants to defund the police and have a bold progressive vision i'm like what's florida real estate look like and i'm oh like my God. And i'm like i don't want to i don't want i don't want to see my time. i mean i want to stay and fight but also i have to be realistic about what 
what comes into government, you know, government affects my business. It not, and I mean my literal business, but also it affects you know schools and safety and you know the the world that we live in here in Massachusetts. And I love Massachusetts. I want to stay in Massachusetts. I don't want to move to Texas. I don't even. I don't want to move to Florida. I like it here. And this is the kind of shit that fucks everything up for everybody. Right. And um, if we're dropping too many F-bombs uh, on this episode, well, too fucking bad. Uh, I, I, think that think, I think that we're kind of fired up enough where, you know, these are, again, I'm going to keep hitting it home. These are very real issues. And until people actually realize that these yep. are very real issues, yep. um, there's going to be no change. And there's going to just keep falling flat. And it, it, it's not going to be great. I mean, nope. this is one of the reasons why, you know, basic Republican voters, I am um, not happy with the current state of the state party. I come from a red state, Jeff. Like, I voted for Mitch McConnell before I left <laughs> Kentucky um, <laughs> in Rand Paul. Um, so, like, to see our state party just dry itself into the ground, it's just not, it's disheartening and it's not great. Yeah. So, we're in a pickle. Um you know, we'll we'll cover at, at a later episode Charlie Baker's legacy. Um, as the you know, he's got a whole another year left in office. So I mean, there's a, yeah. there's a lot to cover. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I support the governor. I didn't always agree with him on everything. And the most recent thing with the the QR code vaccine, yeah, <laughs> vaccine uh, record. I re I don't like the idea of showing your papers. Um, I was vocal about that on Twitter. And I don't think that swung them the other way because it got like the most amount of retweets and likes I've had in a while because I wrote that tweet thread. But it's true. I don't care if they're a Democrat or Republican. If you're going to do something that requires people to show, essentially show their papers to walk into a movie theater or a, a game or a restaurant or whatever, I just no. I'm 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 going to be steadfast against that because it's un-American, um, even if it makes it easier. Sorry. But, yeah. you know, there's there's a whole bunch of other things that, you know, this, but this is the, okay, but I'm not willing to jettison my support for competent governance because there's one policy issue that, or even several policy issues that I disagree on. Everybody's going to disagree on things. Even, mm -hmm. you know, even people you think you're completely aligned with politically, there's going to, something will come up and you'll be like, huh? we probably agree with the mass GOP on policy on like 98.5% yeah. of things. Yeah. There's one five things that we probably we heavily disagree on and what their current actions are. Yep. But Jeff, I do want to break a little bit of current news that's happening right now. Um, former Republican Senator and presidential candidate Bob Dole has passed away. Oh. Um, Jeff, uh, is it Jeff Selene just reported that I'm reading it on Twitter and he just passed. So mega prayers up to his family. Yeah. Um, in the second grade, I whipped votes for Bob Dole in my second grade class, and he won the presidential election of my second grade class. So. Well, I'll, I'll say this as we end the podcast that and, my and my joined it for Bill Clinton. Yeah, the the in my, the class. <laughs> in the class. Yeah, in 1996 was my first presidential election, and uh, I did not vote. I will. I voted for William Jefferson Clinton uh, back okay. then, and I voted for I think Bill Weld for Senate because um, I was I was in college and I was just like I don't know things are going. The economy was good, everything was fine, so I just kind of voted uh, for Bill Clinton and not Bob Dole. And but I want to point out, since that time, I've never voted for I don't believe a Democrat ever since. Literally, um, I found my Republican footing uh, as I. Navigated my yeah. way through college. All right. Well, prayers to uh, Bob Dole and his family. Thank you very much for your service in yeah. the military and in the U.S. Senate. You were a necessary voice. Uh, big prayers up to your family. Amen. All right. Well, um, I'll leave you with a quote from John McCain, uh, who said, you know what? It's always darkest uh, before it gets pitch black. So that's where the mass GOP is. Anyway, folks, go over to the Patreon, only a dollar a month. Uh, we just covered uh, the Supreme Court decision, so yep. we get to give you some extra content there. Patreon.com slash Ronopod, only a dollar a month. Sign up there. A um, dollar a month. Sign up. Come on. What are you, cheap? Uh, let's go. And um, we will see you next week. Let's uh, say goodbye, Caitlin. Bye, guys. Have a good week. Bye -bye. Everything will get And I'm not as, you know.
as like Jeff. Yeah, no, it could get worse. We could be California. <laughs> we could be California. We could be de Blasio's New York City. It can happen. It can happen okay, with a, but, a bold, Eric, a bold progressive vision is what makes that happen. <laughs> so okay. we can be San Francisco. We can be Chicago. Oh. It's possible. So, oh, okay. all right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.